historical basis of modern understanding. Modern understandings of DNA have evolved from the discovery of nucleic acid to the development of the double helix model. In the 1860s, Friedrich Miescher, figure 1, a physician by profession, was the first person to isolate phosphate-rich chemicals from white blood cells or leukocytes. He named these chemicals, which would eventually be known as RNA and DNA, nuclein because they were isolated from the nuclei of the cells. A half century later, British bacteriologist Frederick Griffith was perhaps the first person to show that hereditary information could be transferred from one cell to another, horizontally, rather than by descent. In 1928, he reported the first demonstration of bacterial transformation, a process in which external DNA is taken up by a cell, thereby changing morphology and physiology. He was working with Streptococcus pneumoniae, the bacterium that causes pneumonia. Griffith worked with two strains, rough R and smooth S. The R strain is non-pathogenic, does not cause disease and is called rough because its outer surface is a cell wall and lacks a capsule. As a result, the cell surface appears uneven under the microscope. The S strain is pathogenic, disease-causing, and has a capsule outside its cell wall. As a result, it has a smooth appearance under the microscope. Griffith injected the live R strain into mice and they survived. In another experiment, when he injected mice with the heat-killed S strain, they also survived. In a third set of experiments, a mixture of live R strain and heat-killed S strain were injected into mice, and to his surprise the mice died. Upon isolating the live bacteria from the dead mouse, only the S strain of bacteria was recovered. When this isolated S strain was injected into fresh mice, the mice died. Griffith concluded that something had passed from the heat-killed S strain into the live R strain and transformed it into the pathogenic S strain, and he called this the transforming principle. Figure 2. These experiments are now famously known as Griffith's transformation experiments. Scientists Oswald Avery, Colin McLeod, and McLean McCarty, 1944 were interested in exploring this transforming principle further. They isolated the S strain from the dead mice and isolated the proteins and nucleic acids, namely RNA and DNA. As these were possible candidates for the molecule of heredity, they conducted a systematic elimination study. They used enzymes that specifically degraded each component and then used each mixture separately to transform the R strain. They found that when DNA was degraded, the resulting mixture was no longer able to transform the bacteria, whereas all of the other combinations were able to transform the bacteria. This led them to conclude that DNA was the transforming principle. Career Connection Forensic Scientists and DNA Analysis DNA evidence was used for the first time to solve an immigration case. The story started with a teenage boy returning to London from Ghana to be with his mother. Immigration authorities at the airport were suspicious of him, thinking that he was traveling on a forged passport. After much persuasion, he was allowed to go live with his mother. But the immigration authorities did not drop the case against him. All types of evidence, including photographs, were provided to the authorities but deportation proceedings were started nevertheless. Around the same time, Dr. Alec Jeffries of Leicester University in the United Kingdom had invented a technique known as DNA fingerprinting. The immigration authorities approached Dr. Jeffries for help. He took DNA samples from the mother and three of her children, plus an unrelated mother, and compared the samples with the boy's DNA. Because the biological father was not in the picture, DNA from the three children was compared with the boy's DNA. He found a match in the boy's DNA for both the mother and his three siblings. He concluded that the boy was indeed the mother's son. 
Forensic scientists analyze many items, including documents, handwriting, firearms, and biological samples. They analyze the DNA content of hair, semen, saliva, and blood, and compare it with a database of DNA profiles of known criminals. Analysis includes DNA isolation, sequencing, and sequence analysis. Most forensic DNA analysis involves polymerase chain reaction, PCR, amplification of short tandem repeat, STR, loci and electrophoresis to determine the length of the PCR amplified fragment. Only mitochondrial DNA is sequenced for forensics. Forensic scientists are expected to appear at court hearings to present their findings. They are usually employed in crime labs of city and state government agencies. Geneticists experimenting with DNA techniques also work for scientific and research organizations, pharmaceutical industries, and college and university labs. Students wishing to pursue a career as a forensic scientist should have at least a bachelor's degree in chemistry, biology, or physics and preferably some experience working in a laboratory. Experiments conducted by Martha Chase and Alfred Hershey in 1952 provided confirmatory evidence that DNA was the genetic material and not proteins. Chase and Hershey were studying a bacteriophage, which is a virus that infects bacteria. Viruses typically have a simple structure, a protein coat, called the capsid and a nucleic acid core that contains the genetic material, either DNA or RNA. The bacteriophage infects the host bacterial cell by attaching to its surface, and then it injects its nucleic acids inside the cell. The phage DNA makes multiple copies of itself using the host machinery, and eventually the host cell bursts, releasing a large number of bacteriophages. Hershey and Chase labeled one batch of phage with radioactive sulfur, 35S, to label the protein coat. Another batch of phage were labeled with radioactive phosphorus, 32P, because phosphorus is found in DNA, but not protein. The DNA and not the protein would be tagged with radioactive phosphorus. Each batch of phage was allowed to infect the cells separately. After infection, the phage bacterial suspension was put in a blender, which caused the phage coat to be detached from the host cell. The phage and bacterial suspension was spun down in a centrifuge. The heavier bacterial cells settled down and formed a pellet, whereas the lighter phage particles stayed in the supernatant. In the tube that contained phage labeled with 35S, the supernatant contained the radioactively labeled phage whereas no radioactivity was detected in the pellet. In the tube that contained the phage labeled with 32P, the radioactivity was detected in the pellet that contained the heavier bacterial cells, and no radioactivity was detected in the supernatant. Hershey and Chase concluded that it was the phage DNA that was injected into the cell and carried information to produce more phage particles thus providing evidence that DNA was the genetic material and not proteins. Figure 3. Around this same time, Austrian biochemist Erwin Shargaff examined the content of DNA in different species and found that the amounts of adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine were not found in equal quantities, and that it varied from species to species, but not between individuals of the same species. He found that the amount of adenine equals the amount of thymine, and the amount of cytosine equals the amount of guanine, or A equals T and G equals C. This is also known as Chargaff's rules. This finding proved immensely useful when Watson and Crick were getting ready to propose their DNA. Double helix model. Section summary. DNA was first isolated from white blood cells by Friedrich Miescher who called it nuclein because it was isolated from nuclei. Frederick Griffith's experiments with strains of streptococcus pneumoniae provided the first hint 
that DNA may be the transforming principle. Avery, McLeod, and McCarty proved that DNA is required for the transformation of bacteria. Later experiments by Hershey and Chase using bacteriophage T2 proved that DNA is the genetic material. Shargaff found that the ratio of A equals T and C equals G, and that the percentage content of A, T, G, and C is different for different species. Thank you for watching Booktube channel. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons to receive notifications about new contents.